Okay, we're back today studying pointers, and we've got a new problem for you. Try this uh, code and see if you can figure out what the output is. Pause the video now and give it a shot. I should actually give you a hint for this problem. You're going to need to use uh, an ASCII table. So if you, you look up, um, if you go, if you go man ASCII, let's try this again, man ASCII, like that, uh, you'll get to the ASCII table, or you can look it up online, uh, but that should help you get the solution. Okay, let's have a look at the solution here. Um, we've got W and X, and those are char pointers. Pointer, actually, they're char pointer pointers. And then we have Y and Z, and those are char pointers. And then we have A and B, and those are just chars. Okay? Uh, then we go to line 9, and it says A is equal to C, okay? Then we go to line 10, W is equal to address of Z. There's my pointer. X is equal to the address of Y. There's my pointer. Z is equal to the address of A. There's my pointer. And Y is equal to the address of B. There's my pointer. Next, it says I dereference x twice. So dereference, dereference, I get to b. And it says that's equal to 1. Now, that's not the integer one, by the way. Okay, These are all, these are characters. So that's the character one. Then uh, line 15 says w equals x. So what that means is that w now points to where x points to. So let me erase this pointer and I'll say that w now points to the same place that x points to. And then the last line says dereference z once. So I'll get that's just a c. And then minus dereference w twice. So once, twice, and we'll get to 1. Notice now we're subtracting two characters from each other. And my hint was we have to go and look at the ASCII table. So I'm going to find the values for lowercase c and the number 1. So those are here. Let's go find. Now listen, I want the decimal values here, right? So that's the second column here. So uh, lowercase, OK, so number the 1 here okay there's the 1 that's 49 okay got the second one what about lowercase c and uh, well that's 99 so it would be 99 minus uh, 49 which is equal to 50 now um, question here that this 50 is an integer, okay, but what character would 50 be? And so if we kind of, uh, let's see, where were they? There it is. So 50 is right here. And so it's the, no, it's the character 2. That means that if we go back to our thing here, right, we could say, or we could say as a, as a uh, as a character, it would be the two. So let's see here if we run this program, what we actually get. Now, obviously, I can't run this because this isn't really a program. It's just you know lines of code, but not really a full program. But let me show you. I have another one here that I have actually created a real executable. Uh, code and it's this one here so here's the same program that we just looked at except now I've 
actually got all the libraries and everything else that I need for this thing to run. And notice, I'm also I'm printing it out um, in the C++ way that I had in the previous example. Also, I'm printing it out as a char. You can see here the, the results, and I'll, I can prove it to you. I can just hit compile this and run it. It's 52 and 52 are the output lines. And so I've got four output lines here. The first two are C++, so that gives me a 50, which is an integer. Was that, that, was this, that was the answer of the, of the problem. And then if I want to change it into a character, I, I cast it here into a char and put brackets around it, and I get my 2 as a char. And I can do the same thing uh, just in slightly different ways in C using printf. I just, here I say um, print it out as an integer percent %i, and here I say print it out as a character percent %c. Okay? Okay, so the next topic that we're going to do today is going to be um, dealing with constant pointers. So if you remember, let's just go back for a second. And I have, I have the example code here, but we'll look at it in a minute. If you remember, we can declare, let's say, for example, the simplest type, right? We can declare uh, an integer like this. We can say int x. And if we wanted to make the variable const, we'd put the word const in front of it. And then now if we did this for x, we, we, we can't go like this afterwards. This would be illegal. We can't actually make a variable be const and then change it later. So this doesn't work. What we can do, however, is we can say const int x, and now we can initialize it as we declare it. And we could say something like this. That's, that'll work. Now what this does, of course, is it creates the variable x, assigns it the value of 1, and now that's it. it. The x cannot be changed going forward. However, so that's the concept of just a simple integer. Well, constant pointers are slightly different. So there's actually two possibilities in terms of what we can have. So let's say we have a pointer p. And let's say that it um, points to an integer. And the integer will be in this box. Okay, Let's say it's a 1. Well, there's two things that we can make const. We can either make the, this pointer const, or we can make the box const, which means that we, we can't, the, the number, the integer in here, or whatever data type, it doesn't have to be an integer, whatever data type this pointer is pointing to, we can't modify it. So in other words, essentially it becomes a read-only pointer. We can't modify what's, what it's pointing to. The other type of const, this one, says that we can't change where the pointer points to. So for example, if we had another box, and this had a value of 2, if the pointer, if the arrow itself was const, then we would not be able to have it point somewhere else. Okay, So let's take a look at how this works. So let's go back to the code. And here, I've declared two uh, variables, 1a, 1b. They're both integers, and they have initial values. Now here, I'm putting the word const before the int. Okay. What this now says is that it's that the integer itself is constant. So let me try showing this to you on the drawing board with different colors, and perhaps that might make it clear. Okay, so we can't change the value of p that, that p points to in this case. I like to think of it as if const comes before the int, that means the integer itself cannot be modified. 
Okay, so in this first example here, let's let's say um, there's this pointer P, and okay now it points to, and now I'm going to change colors. I'm going to say this is red, and I'm making the box here red because um, the variable I'll, I won't make that red. The variable here is A. So P is equal to the address of A. So P is pointing to what? To the variable A. But what is A? Well, A you can see here on line 7. It's a 5. But the, the box is whatever, orange or red. It means I can't change that. So in other words, if you look at line number 18 here, dereferencing dereferencing P and changing what's in the box is illegal. Okay? And so this is const int uh, and then I'll, I'll say star P. Okay? Notice the, the const comes before the int. So the way I remember this, as I said, is that I can't change the integer. But, but, I can change where it points to. So, for example, if I had uh, the variable b, and then here it is, and then the value here, I think, was uh, 6, right, on line 8. I can, change, I can change with this line here, line 16. I can make p point to b, but I still can't change uh, what's in the box by dereferencing p. Okay? So that's the first example of const. The second example of const is where you put the const after the star int. So in this case we'll go int star and then we'll say const and now and in this case I'm not using p anymore I'm using q and here okay just like before when I showed you with the, the very very first example the simple one of the int I can't stop here because I, I would never be able to set what Q is equal to now. So I have to initialize it here, and I have, I've said it's the address of A. Okay? So again, if I move it up a little bit and we have this variable Q, and we have, um, let's say, A and B again, and we have the boxes, okay? So, um, in this case, I think A was 5 and uh, B was 6 still. Now, um, initially, right here, you see that it's pointing to, but I got to change the color, right? Because the, so now Q is pointing to A, but now the arrow is frozen. In other words, I can't make it point anywhere else but I can change what's in the box. So if you see here, um, actually, um, I actually set A equal to 9. So that's not right here. This should be a 9. OK, so now A is 9. But you notice here, I can change, I can dereference Q and change this now to an 8. And that's OK. I can do that. But what I cannot do is I can't make Q point anywhere else. Okay? So the, the, when the const comes after, it means the arrow is frozen. And when the const comes before, it means the box itself is frozen. Okay? So I hope that kind of makes sense. And you can see here, line 28 says, I wouldn't be able to make Q point anywhere else. Now, having said all this, there is one other final option, OK? And that's here on the very last line, which says const, I mean, it's, it's, it's um, it says is possible here. You could put const before and after int star, in which case then 
in that in that uh, situation, you would have essentially. In this case, I think it's like XP, and that would mean that it would the arrow would be frozen and the box would be frozen. Okay, and so this would be A, and so whatever A was, uh, let's say it's a nine. I, I wouldn't be able to make XP point to anything else, and I would not be able to modify or dereference and uh, modify what it points to by going star. I wouldn't be able to go star XP equals. This would be not allowed. And I also wouldn't be able to say XP is equal to the address of anything else. That's not allowed either in this case. So this is where you have const in star and then const and then this this variable would be XP and obviously we're gonna have to set it to initialize it something here and and that's what I have on line 35 okay not sure why you'd want to do this but you can okay so uh, that's the whole code there and uh, I hope that covers constant pointers in a clear and concise uh, fashion. Okay, so the next topic we're going to learn today is called pointer arithmetic. And they're to do with arrays. Now, let's take a look here at this program. Line 6 here creates an array of numbers, of integer, well, sorry, an array of integers, and there's five of them. So I can store five integers. Now what I want you to know or understand here is that when you create an array, the, the variable of that array, the variable itself, numbers here, is a pointer. Now I know it might not seem like it. You might say, wait a minute. We're not declaring numbers as a pointer. That's true. But the way that C, C++ works is that when you create an array, it is a pointer. So we can actually dereference numbers and assign it to an integer. So which one is that? Well, it's the first one. So let me, it's the first element. Let me draw you a picture of what this looks like. Okay, well, I made one modification. I just felt like the, the variable numbers was too long and I changed it to nums. I think that uh, makes the code a little cleaner, to easier to read. So if we go to my whiteboard here and I have my array called nums, Think of this now as a pointer, and it points to a one, two, three, four, five. An array of five integers. Okay? Now, notice here, when I say dereference nums equals one, what I've just done there is I've put a one there in the first box. And then when I print it out, when I say num0, well, you know, these are the indices, right, of nums, because nums is an array. And of course, we have indices 0, 1, 2, uh, 3, and 4. And so therefore, I'm going to get, I should get an output of 1 here. Okay? Um, that's actually, I, I had a 10 there before, so that should, there, fix that. And so now, in the line 9, I say nums1 equals 99. So what that's going to do is it's going to put a 99 right there. Okay. Now, if I want to print that guy out, I can also reference him like this. That means that this box here, that second location in the array, can be referenced in two different ways. I can say nums1, or I can say 
dereference, and now I need, now this is super important, I need brackets. Without the brackets, it's not going to be correct. Nums plus 1. And both of these terms will refer to the 99. Okay? Now, here's the interesting thing is on line 11, let's take a look at the whole thing. Let's take a look at the address of num0 and the address of num1. Because it seems like I'm dereferencing an a mem this is the, so when I dereference something, what do you dereference? Well, you have to dereference a pointer. That means nums is a pointer, but when I add 1 to it, doesn't it mean I'm just adding 1 to the memory location? So let's see if that makes sense. Um, because the problem with this is, so let's, let's make some fictitious number up in our minds, okay? Let's say this location right here is memory location, um, let's say it's 60. Well, that means this next memory location is going to be, is it 61? Ask yourself this, if each of these boxes contains an integer, then how many bytes, how many bytes does one int require? And the answer, remember we did size of before for ints in previous lessons, four bytes equals one int. That means that if this is memory location 60, that means the next one has to be 64. And the one after that has to be 68. Okay, so the question now is, how can we simply add 1 to the memory? Wouldn't that give us 61? Well, let's run this, because that's not going to work. We need 64, right? Let's run this and see what it is. And so now, here's the, so there, there's the two boxes. Don't look at these outputs here. What we're really concerned about are, is, is these guys here. Now, now, I think this is hexadecimal, um, but most importantly, you notice everything is the same except for in these two addresses that are being, being printed, and that's the address of the first one, that's the 1, and the 99 is E4, and the first one's E0. So notice that the offset of these two guys, this is at 0, and that's at 4. So it is correct in that, notice that these two memory locations, I just you know, put in 60 and 64 just so that it'd be something easy that we could look at in the actual memory. That's the actual memory in the computer. But notice that they're off by four. So why, and, and that's as it should be because each of these locations requires four bytes to store the integer. But how is it then that my code is only adding a one and not a four? And the answer to that is actually really interesting. It's that the plus operator is overloaded for pointers. So notice this plus operator here has a pointer on the left-hand side and an integer on the right. And it's smart enough to recognize and say, well, what type of pointer is nums? It knows it's an integer pointer. So instead of adding 1, it actually adds 1 times the size of the integer. So the size of the integer, now this is all transparent to you. That's why it's called pointer arithmetic. But it's actually adding 4, not 1. Because it knows the size of the integer is 4 bytes. And since we want to add 1, think of it as location, it'll actually add 4 bytes. So this happens all automatically. And that's an example of pointer arithmetic. So that's why we get the second location, the 99 there. Okay? And you could see that those addresses, this one and this one, are offset by 4 bytes. So let's move on now. And here, we're creating uh, an integer pointer p. And now we set that equal to nums. Now what that means is that in our drawing here, we have another variable, another pointer we just created, that points to the same place 
that nums points to. So now we, not, we, so now we have two pointers pointing to the same memory uh, structure. We have nums and we have p. Then I say let's dereference p and make it equal to 10. What that'll do now is that p is actually pointing to the first element, so this first element now becomes a 10. Then we'll go p equals p plus 1, which will now have p point to not the beginning, but it'll point to the second element now. Okay? Then it's pointing now to the 99. And then we'll say, let's dereference p and make it equal to 20. So now what it does is it erases this and, make, and turns it into a 20. OK? Then we say p is equal to the address of nums 2. So this is, this is like yet another way of changing where it points to. Okay, so this is nums, and nums2 is this one, but we're saying it's equal to the address of that location. So now p points to here, okay, the next one, and then we'll say dereference it line 20 and make it equal to 30. Okay, next line, p is nums plus 3. So here is nums, that's pointing to the beginning, plus 3, pointer arithmetic. Now p is going to point to here. And then you say dereference it and make that 40. And then the next line, um, we say p equals nums. So now p is now pointing back to the beginning there. So points to the first one again. And then we say add 4 to p and dereference it and, and set it equal to 50. We add 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now when we dereference p plus 4, we're now dealing with this box here. And so now we'll make that 50. So notice these are the values in the array after this is all done. And we now iterate in a for loop from 0 to 4 and we print out nums n and just to show you that there's a different way of accessing all these elements we can also print them out using this method here and so when I do that when I run this code you can clearly see that all of those elements are printed out and the values are the same whether we use this notation or whether we use this notation. Okay? They're identical. However, I just really want to make a point here that if you take away the brackets, it doesn't work. It's not the same thing. So watch this. If I come come over here and I let's say uh, well even if I just delete these two guys out, okay, so now line 29 is going to run. Notice now if I take the brackets away, look, look what the output is. See if you can figure out what the output would be. Notice the difference here is that I'm going to dereference nums before I add n to nums. And so it's going to be the first element plus n every time. And so that's what it is, right? When n goes from 0 to 4, and so as you can see here, 10 plus 0, 10 plus 1, 10 plus 2, 10 plus 3, 10 plus 4. Okay, so that's not the same. So I just want you to recognize that in order for this to work, you absolutely require the brackets. So essentially, we had like examples of pointer arithmetic here, uh, here, here, you know, and here. All these are where you're where you're adding something to a pointer and then dereferencing it. Um, are examples of pointer arithmetic. So I hope this example 
was clear and that you now understand how an array is a pointer and how you can access those elements in one of two different ways. There's one last example that I wanted to show you guys in this lesson and that is uh, C strings. So you can make C strings in two different ways. You can make them like this on line 9 where you create a character array and you specify the size and you, and you, you set it equal to um, some string. So that's valid. But the other way is you can make a constant character pointer like this. And now if you remember how const works, now we can't change uh, the character. So we can't change anything inside there. So with this one, with A, we can change the letters in bonjour. But with B, we can't. So this is, this is so line 12 is allowed, but line 13 is not. So actually, there is one other way in which we can uh, create a C string. And that's on line 12 here, where we don't specify the size. So in, the, if, in this situation, let's find out here. I've got the, I'm printing out the three uh, character uh, strings. The, the C strings, and I'm printing out the length of them, and I'm printing out the, the size of them. Let's see what values we get. So notice that they're all five characters long. Okay, so um, hello is a five letter word, but um, the size of them are all different. And so why is this? Now the first one, the 32, that should be very clear as to why it says it says size 32. That's because, as you can see here, we're creating an array of size 32. So let's skip to the last one here. Why is this one, why does this one have a size of 6? Notice when I ran it, it said 6 here. You can see the 6, it's odd. Why is that 6 and not? So the reason for this is because um, don't forget that even though the length of this character array is 5 because there's 5 letters, remember what the last character is, OK? That last character is the null character backslash zero. So in fact, that's why we're getting six here for size of, for, for C. Now, this A is big enough that your A is 32, so you're not going to see that. It's going to say size of is 32. But for this one, for C, it creates it with just the correct amount of uh, memory required, which is six bytes. So five for the word hello, and one more for the null character on the end, which terminates the C string, which is backslash zero. Now, for this one, however, notice for B, when we print that one out, we get something completely different again. Notice we're getting an eight for that. So what's that all about? Well, so the reason for that is very simple, actually. It's because B is not a character array, it's a pointer. And a pointer in a 64-bit operating system, which this is, if you have 64 bits for an address, right, and each there's 8 bits in a byte, how many times does 8 go into 64? Well, the answer to that is 8. So that means it's actually not showing us the size of hello, it's actually showing us the size of what points to hello, which is the pointer. And since it's in a 64-bit operating system, all pointers are going to be 8 bytes long. And so that's why we get the 8 here. And um, 
we get the 32 for the first one, and we get 6. I guess the one that's kind of tricky, right, is, is this one, I think, because that extra 1 is for the null character on the end. And so, you know, you can make him, you can make him any way you want, but just, just note that when you do create a constant uh, character pointer, you can't change it afterwards. It's, it's set. All right, well, I hope you uh, enjoyed this lesson on pointers, and uh, next time we'll do more things with pointers. See you next time.